You can't learn citizenship by reading a book or, or by listening to a teacher talk. So I'm really a, uh, I guess, type of teacher that really tries to create situations to where students can experience citizenship. Uh, we do a lot of simulations, a lot of uh, hands-on activities. I will be calling some of the groups that uh, maybe are looking not so favorable on my bills into my little governor's mansion again, and we'll see if we can't work out some more compromises. So I think really you, you just can't make a student memorize things about citizenship. They have to experience it and you have to make it relevant to them. Welcome to the mansion again. Senator, how you doing? Senator Smith, nice to see you. Okay, now what's the problem with the governor's bill? I mean, we're, why are you guys getting <clears throat> soft on the tobacco industry and why are you getting Well, in soft our uh, mock legislature, I play the role of the uh, governor for the state of Nebraska, and I get him into my little office, which we call the governor's mansion during our simulation. Well, we don't want to get soft on the tobacco industry. We just don't want to try to kill it with like a five dollar tax on each pack of cigarettes. It's it's not going to affect the tobacco industry. That cost is passed on to the consumer. So it, yeah, but they won't buy the cigarettes. Well, do you feel good about paying a real high Blue Cross Blue Shield insurance premium? Because we try to teach a respect for politicians. Yeah. I think people are so cynical nowadays, and the people are so down on politicians. And I, I think they try to we we try to get them a feel for what it's like to be in that chair, when they have to vote one way or the other, and they have to try to represent several special interests. So really, a lot of hands-on learning by doing, I think, is a real key. Welcome to a close-up club reaction night. Tonight, we're going to be discussing the issue of multiculturalism. We have a, uh, a nonpartisan political science club called the Close-Up Club, and uh, we do a lot of community activity things. Uh, we sponsor uh, public forums that we call reaction nights, and these are community forums on, on issues that students choose. Mr. Miles, with an increased multicultural education, don't you fear that history may become altered for the purpose of promoting sensitivity? I think we have to start off by saying that multicultural education is true education, and that if we have anything less than that, then it's not education, but it's miseducation. I think in a lot of schools, unfortunately, kids uh, are not listened to. I think they yearn to be, to be heard. I think if you give them a chance to give their views, they'll be very good. Because we provide the forum for these young people to have some ownership and to say what they think. Well, good evening and welcome to a new season of Sorting It Out. The Student Organization Against uh, Racial Tension, or SORT, it's a multicultural club. Uh, we do a half hour cable show. Uh, we invite a lot of different uh, students from across the state to come in and speak. People sort of shied away from it at first, especially adults, uh, especially school administrators. <laughs> but they've worked very well. Uh, our communities accepted them 100%. Uh, and I think it's because of our fairness. What we're really trying to do is spread cultural awareness. We're trying to spread information that's accurate about cultural groups and then let people make up their mind. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the public hearing of LB 900. This bill is really important because it's going to teach kids a cultural awareness. It's going to give high school students an idea of where Nebraska needs to stand culturally. Well, LB 922 is the uh, Nebraska Multicultural Education Act. We had a reaction night in 1990 in September. We called it Racism in Nebraska. We had uh, a minority ethnic uh, group on a panel. So I had some students who thought that maybe uh, every school should be promoting it, not just this school. The kids lobbied. Uh, we went to our state legislature. We found a lot of support down there. It's the best year of teaching I ever had because we would be role-playing the unicameral in my classroom one day, and then we'd go down to Lincoln and testify at a real public hearing the next day. I think there were 900-some bills proposed and 144 passed, and ours was one. Without students, it would have never worked. I think that Mr. Kubik really cares about the fact that we're going to learn something in the class. He doesn't just give us a note and say, okay, write this down, we're going to have a quiz Thursday. Instead, he gives us the opportunity to live what we're learning, and, and that's a good experience for all of us. For some of the kids, their activities in the government class, the Close-Up Club Foundation, the trips to Washington, D.C., the SORT Club, for many of our kids, that's the highlight of their high school career. I think you have to really get active. I think you have to get involved. I think you almost have to be one of the kids sometimes and, and uh, kind of think like they do on some issues and have some fun. If you don't have fun nowadays, then you're not going to last in this profession very long. And there's ways to have fun and learn. I think those two go along, yeah, hand in hand. Learning doesn't have to be a boring type of task.